to whip up something for the locals. Fula! Fula Vinaka! Piss off! This is something scrumptiously simple you might want to whip up at home. You can do this with anything you might have lying around your kitchen. Monkfish head, foie gras, and I always seem to have one of these lying around. 1994 Ford Focus. I'm going to roughly chop these tomatoes now. I love tomatoes. They remind me of my breasts. Now that's finished, it's time to seal the flavour into the meat. Don't touch that steak! Kamikaze Cookery, three geeks cooking properly with science. This is not the Middle Ages. We are not sitting here in a dung heap around a freshly slaughtered turnip. But if I'm cooking, for some reason, I'm going to listen to Jamie Oliver telling me how to cook things in essentially the same way that people were cooking in the French court in the 14th century. Well, that's just crap. Cooking is chemistry. It's science. Anyone can learn to cook. You do not need to just whack a bit of it in. I'm Hugh Hancock. This is Alex Nudgens. Hello. This is Paul Hamilton. And today, we're going to teach you how to cook the perfect steak using science. This is a cow. For the perfect steak, we need the perfect cut of beef. And beef comes from cows. We have brisket, which is this bit here. This bit just here. It's okay, we're not going to eat you just yet. Flank steak, which is along the side here. You get that in the more cheaper cuts, like frying steak. Here we have sirloin which is this bit here just above the loin. Rump steak, top side and silver side. If we were to cut Bunty open along the middle here, fillet steak is just on the inside, just down in here. Now fillet is an unused muscle, because it's inside the skeleton, which means that it's got a much more tender texture than a lot of the other cuts of meat. Okay, so one of the things that we have access to in the modern world is thermometers, which are great for, you know, sticking up people's asses to tell when they're ill. They're also quite good for cooking, and that's an image you probably didn't want. Okay. You see, the deal with meat is that when you're cooking meat, you're walking a tightrope. There's three different elements to meat. There's the fat, there's the uh, muscle fibres, and there is the uh, connective tissue, the collagen. When we cook steak, what we're trying to do is have the muscle start to degrade. The muscle fibres shorten so that they split, into amino acids and shorter protein chains which taste really nice and at the same time they release some fluid which makes the meat more chewable. To do that we need to get the meat to 55 degrees centigrade but no higher. So what's wrong with getting a pan, making it hot and putting a steak in it? Well the problem is that when you get in a pan, now a pan is going to be between 150 to 250 degrees centigrade. That forms a temperature gradient with the inside of the steak being the cool bit and the outside of the steak being, as we technically call it, the hot bit. Um, meaning the outside of the steak can be at 150, 160 degrees, meaning it utterly ruined, while the inside of the steak is still getting to uh, 55 degrees if you get it wrong. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cook uh, this steak using a technique called sous vide, which basically means we're going to seal it inside a plastic bag and then dump it in a hot water bath. So basically sous vide is um, boil in the back? No, it's not quite boil in the back. Right. In that we're not quite boiling. Getting a bath of water to 55 degrees Celsius is a bit of a pain in the arse. Once you get into the region of the temperature you're looking for, only ever use the minimum heat. It does actually make the temperature rise quite quickly. Also, when you're getting, um, when you're actually getting close, say, you're, say for this one I was at 53 degrees Celsius, you might want to turn the heat off and see if it's going to normalise to 55 degrees. It's 56 now, no heat's on, so what I like to do at this point is stare into space for five minutes, approximately like this. Ah, excellent. How's the wine drinking going, Hugh? Yeah, it's great. How's the uh, water bath going? Um, it's great fun, you know. Right, well, the water bath is at 55 degrees Celsius. All we need now is the steak. What are these? Marvellous. Sous vide, literally, means under vacuum. 
We didn't have a vacuum sealer to hand, but luckily Alex and Paul had come up with a creative solution. Right. Right, okay. Vacuum cleaner in place. So I'm ready. Okay. Oh, miss. It's actually working! Holy hell. Right. Ready? One, two, three. Go, no, man. Miss. Oh, 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 Let's try it again, just use the very corner of that. Right. Ready? Alex, I'm sure this isn't the um, last time I'm going to ask you this, but could you suck slightly less? Um, not the ring. All right. This time, I'm going to fold it like that. All right, good, good. Yeah. Right, ready? One, two, two three. three. Yes! <laughs> While the meat cooked, Paul and Alex decided to see how our recipe compares with molecular gastronomy pioneer Heston Blumenthal's perfect steak. Right. Okay, here's his, um, here's his perfect steak here. Oh, um, looks rather nice, huh? Looks yeah. nice. This is what you serve with it. I've got no clue what that is. It appears to be a cheese towel. Do, do, do. Use a digital probe, which we've well, done. We've got a digital probe. How's the digital probe doing? Um, What's it saying? 64. What? Um, isn't it meant to be 55? Yes. Ooh, bollocks. Cooking steak is not incredibly temperature sensitive. You can get away with a couple of degrees plus or minus. In our case, we have more like eight degrees plus or minus, so it may have all gone horribly wrong. In any case, the surface of this is probably still teeming with lots of entertaining bacteria. The muscle of the steak won't have contained any bacteria while it was alive, but after death, it's very easy for something horrible to colonize its surface. 55 degrees is right on the borderline between killing bacteria stone dead and just giving them a nice away day on the beach. So we want to blast it with a lot more heat to make sure that we've committed bacterial genocide. At the same time though, we don't want to heat the interior of the meat any hotter than it already is because right now it's perfectly cooked. To just heat the exterior, we use one of these. Now I notice here I'm not using a kitchen blowtorch. This is a plumber's blowtorch. Complete with gigantic flame. Searing the meat not only kills bacteria, but it also stimulates the Maillard reactions, which are responsible for the fantastic meaty brown flavours. We'll be talking more about Maillard reactions in an upcoming episode. Now you're going to get a little bit of spitting here, so if you don't wear glasses, I do recommend safety goggles. Indeed, if you do wear glasses, I still recommend safety goggles, I've just forgotten them. And we're done. And there we go. Right. Now what we need is a steak knife. Okay, that's handy. It's really handy. That looks fucking marvellous. Jamie Oliver is Britain's most popular cockney chef. Which is funny, because he's about as cockney as Boris Johnson late one evening, wearing a mink stole, stocking suspenders and a pearl necklace. Ew.